Eternally Yours, a program of inspiring music and an eternal message of hope. On today's program, Reverend Mebby's message is titled, Triumph and Trials. And our musical guests are Josie Lambert and Marcus Unger. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and grief to bear. What a privilege to carry. Everything to God in prayer. Do your friends despise for sin? forsake thee take it to the Lord in prayer what a friend we have in Jesus all our sins and grief to bear carry everything to God in prayer do your friends despise and forsake you take it to the Lord in prayer he's promised never to or forsake you take it to the Lord in prayer thank you so much for tuning in to eternally yours telecast and thank you Josie Lambert for the anointed, anointed song what a friend we have in Jesus. Now the message I want to share today is called Triumphing Triumph and Trials. We all get them, you know. Many, many decades ago now, I made a decision that I wanted to be real to the people, that I didn't want to come across as a minister that never has a problem. I didn't want to come across as, if you pray and read the Bible and praise God, do your best to lead a moral life, you'll never have any problems and you'll be rolling in success and all things will be absolutely great. To me, that's not real Bible. Because if that was really true, what about Paul? <laughs> Paul had a lot of troubles. And when you hear me speak, I pray you will forgive me if I've ever come across as though nothing ever troubles me. Yes, I get troubles. But the matter is, the point is, how do we handle our trials? How, how do we handle what we're going through? So this message is an encouraging word to encourage people. Yes, we go through trials, but God help us go through them in God's strength. God help us go through them and come through stronger in faith. I say to you folks, I'm going for the gold. You know, I'm going for the gold. Athletes, they go for the gold. I'm going for the gold, which means the trying of your faith is more precious than gold. And there's reasons why God allows trials. I want to go into that. And I also want to say from my heart, it just seems to me, honestly, the deeper the trials come, the more deeper I go into Christ's strength. And it amazes me, after following Jesus, my precious holy God and friend and Savior and Lord and healer and deliverer, it just amazes me how much deeper I can go into his strength inside me. Christians, we serve a God Almighty that dwells right inside us. He's closer than a brother, closer than a sister. He will never leave us nor forsake us. So this God I'm speaking about, 
has said in his word in the book of Acts 14, 21, and 22. When they had preached the gospel to that city and made disciples, strengthening the souls of the disciples, exhorting, encouraging them to continue in the faith, and saying, we must, must, through many tribulations, enter the kingdom of God. We must, through many tribulations, enter the kingdom of God. Now, why would God make it so we must go through tribulations before we enter the blessing of the kingdom of God? And incidentally, I have a message on the difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. I believe with all my heart, the kingdom of God is to be in your life and mine, Christians, in the here and now. And the kingdom of heaven is where we're going. <laughs> and I can confirm that with scriptures, especially the one in the book of Romans, chapter 14, that says, the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, joy, in the power of the Holy Ghost, serving Christ, accepted of God, approved of mankind, and following peace and those things which edify. Now, for you and I to have that in our lives is totally a gift from God. It's totally by God's grace. And remember St. Paul, he said, I go by God's grace. So for that blessing to come in your life and mine, it's not going to come to people that are wishy-washy in their walk with God. It's not going to come to people that haven't been tried and true and come forward as gold, so to speak. It will come to people that in the midst of their trials, in the midst of your trying time, you will turn to God deeper and deeper. You will choose. You will choose as I have chosen by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to trust God. I'm going to trust his word. And so hear what I have to say about triumphing through trials. Hallelujah. So tribulation come as we enter the kingdom of God, as we enter walking more in God's strength and his lordship with peace and love and joy and blessings. Trials will come first. They come as we enter the kingdom of living, kingdom living and blessings. We go through them, sometimes around them, sometimes over them, sometimes we blast them away. How would we do that? <laughs> well, I re regularly do this in my morning devotions. I encourage you, James 4, 7 and 8. Submit to God, that's our part. Resist the devil, I do it in the name and the power of Jesus Christ, God Almighty. Resisting, that's our part. And then the third part is so blessed. We draw near to God and we have his word on it, James 4, 7 and 8. He will draw near to us. So that's how we rebuke the enemy. We say the words. We say the words that God has given us, how to have victory in spiritual warfare. Yes, we're in a war, but God has given us power. God has given us might. Ephesians chapter 6, where it says, put on the whole armor of God and you're well able to stand in the evil day. So we're to go through life in God's strength by the Holy Spirit. We take our stand. We believe what God has said. We speak it out. And we put our trust and hope in God. This is how I encourage you. This is how I do my best to handle trials. And those that know me, they know that this is true in the measure that God gives me grace. So we take our stand. We believe. Now, you know, you might think, well, what about the, the faith and the power in believing God that Moses had and Joshua and Peter and John and Ruth and Esther? Pretty amazing indeed. You know what? In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, it says, we Christians, you and I, that have Jesus Christ as Lord, if you're not a Christian, phone in, you get help how to receive Christ. For Christians, the scripture says, hear with your hearts, we have the same faith. We have the same faith that Moses had, Joshua had, because Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith, and as we draw near and dear to him, he's raising our faith level. Your faith level gets raised through eternally yours telecast. Your faith level rises when you hear the gospel spoken by people that speak the real word of God. 
And if you live in British Columbia, a greater Vancouver area, you phone my office and find out when we're speaking. Hallelujah. Love to see you, meet you in person, amen. So we take our stand, we believe, we speak. We speak it out. Someone called in and they said, how do I put on the whole armor of God? You put it on by speaking it. You see, God spoke and the world came into existence. There's power in his word. So when you and I Christians say, Lord, I'm strong in you and the power of your might, I put on the whole armor of God. The moment you say that, the armor is secured. Yes, that's how it works, hallelujah. We're to live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. How are you gonna live by his word if you're not in the word? Mm. Do your best, get in the word. I know sometimes it's a struggle because cares of the world, busyness of life, and, and just things trying to keep us out of the word. Even the enemy of our soul, he fights hard to keep us from getting in God's word, but it's a lifeline to us. I so love God's word. I love God's word more than I can say in the human language because I know this is my lifeline to God's blessings and strength. Let's live by the word of God, amen. So we take our stand, we believe it, we speak out God's word. We trust his word and promises. For Romans 8, 28 says, and it's still true today as it was in days of old, we know, know it. When God's word says no, folks, he means to experience level, amen. Know that all things work together for good. For us who love God, do you love God? If you don't love God, folks, just ask him to reveal his love for you. Oh, that'll do it. <laughs> Did it for me. I discovered God made heaven and earth, the stars, the moon. Took time to love me personally. It takes time to love you. God loves you. That's how we respond. We love him because he loved us first. Hallelujah. Romans 8, 17, 18. If you are children of God, Christians, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, there we go. The word says we're going to do some of the suffering, that we may be glorified together. Oh, I hope I get time to talk about this glory part. <laughs> Hallelujah. 2 Timothy 2, verse 12. If we endure, we will reign with him. And Romans 8, 18. I consider the sufferings of the present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Oh my goodness. I make time to talk about this glory. Do you realize by the word of God, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, 17 and 18 it says, with open face, open heart, we turn to God. And from glory to glory, he's changing us by the Holy Spirit to be like Jesus. From glory to glory, we are to go. So I reason with you folks, if the glory of God will increase in you and I through the suffering we go through, my, it's worth it. I say to you, it's worth it. Because the more the glory of God, his presence, the kind of glory Christ formed in us, the more you will be strong to cope with life. The trials are not to, to take us down the road of despair and depression. They're to be like stepping stones to get stronger in God. For when the trials come, what do we do? Turn to God. We make a stand. We confess his word. We believe his word. We put his, our trust in him and we talk to him. We get a deeper relationship with God. And in turn, his glory increases in us. And we go from glory to glory. Christ formed in us. And the more Christ is formed in you and I, the more we're going to experience the promises of God. Multiple promises from Genesis to Revelations, our inheritance. <laughs> Just get in the Bible and start praying them. I tell you honestly, the first time I read the Bible through, I read it with a goal. I'm going to claim every good verse in there, and I'm going to pray it into my life in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, awesome promises, verses in the Bible. You can pray and then do it in the name of the Lord Jesus. So it says that sufferings will enable glory to come, more of God's glory. Scripture does indicate that Father God leads his children through sufferings 
before they reach his glory fully manifesting. In other words, it's not for naught. One of the ways, two of the ways I'll mention that God works, he's the busiest one in the universe, thank you, Father. <laughs> he works all, all things to good, all things together, together for good for us who love him and are called, is that through the suffering, we go deeper into God and pray his word and draw near to him and get people praying as well and offer the sacrifice of praise, amen. And then more glory manifests in our lives. Yes, all that, all that is your inheritance and mine. So it indicates that through these, these things we go through, more glory will be manifest in your life and in mine. 2 Corinthians 3, 17 and verse 18. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And with unveiled open face, believing, beholding as in a glass, the glory of God, being changed into the same image of Christ. The role, the heart of God is for Christ to be formed in you and I. Oh, indeed. If you don't know Jesus, it's still his goal for you. He wants you to come to know Jesus. You call in and you'll get some help. Amen. 2 Corinthians 4, 17 and 18. For our light affliction, whatever you're going through, I think it could be considered light in view of the eternal blessings, eternity blessings that will come. For our light affliction, 2 Corinthians 4, 17, 18. Our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working, it's working something, a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Hallelujah. Each test you're going through, beloved, it gives a testimony. Now, again, I'm going to go into what do we do with our trials, but how can you have a testimony if you didn't have a test? Now, the Lord put on my heart this morning, some of you are in very dire straits. It could be financially, it could be health-wise, and you're thinking, What's that lady talking about? How can I in any way rejoice? How can I in any way be excited about having more of God's glory in my life when I'm suffering so? Oh, beloved ones, whatever you're going through, quicker than you could blink, God could change it. That's because he's God. If you're bedridden, you could just get up out of that bed Think of what happened in the book of Acts, chapter 3, when Peter said, silver and gold I have none for you. The man was begging. He'd been a paraplegic since birth. He was in dire straits, even begging for food money. And Peter said, such as I have, I give unto you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, God Almighty, rise up and be healed that can happen to you. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, I ask you, what's the harm in believing it? You just get reading the Bible or hearing it if you can't read right now and get strong in the Lord and the power of his might and life will not be so difficult because God wants you and I to go through life in, in, God's strength, <laughs> by the Holy Spirit. Even this going from glory to glory, even going through the trials, everything in the whole Christian walk is to go through life by the Holy Spirit. And my next few messages will be on the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come and help us. Holy Spirit bears witness with your spirit, Christians. You who have sincerely said, Jesus Christ is my Lord, and you meant it. You believed he died on the cross for your, our sins, because he did. He rose from the dead. From that moment on, you're born of God. You're God's forever child. And the Holy Spirit is in you, and he begins a work. He begins such a work in you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. So just choose to trust God that you can be and you can receive every good blessing that he has in the word. And there will be trials that will draw you closer and deeper to God. 
In the book of Peter, chapter 5, it says, After that you have suffered a while, God says, he's speaking to you and me, <laughs> I will strengthen, strengthen, perfect, establish, settle you. Hallelujah. Now we want that yesterday, but God's in control. Just keep loving him, just persist, kind of like, I'm going to trust God, I'm going to trust God. Put on the whole armor of God and go through in God's strength. And for heaven's sake, ask to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Peter did what he did by the power of the Holy Spirit. Paul said, it's by the grace of God that I go. He said, it's God working in him that enabled him to do the great works. This very, within the last two days, God gave me a tremendous blessing because I've been praying Ephesians 3, chapter 20, which says, God is able, your able Father, to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all I could ask or think. And so I've been asking him to do that. But the rest of that verse is, according to God's power that works in us. So the revelation that I got recently is this. God's power works in you the more Christ is formed in you. Hear that with your heart. The more Christ is formed in you, the more God will move through you and more his power will be to give you strength for life. So then we go back to 2 Corinthians 3, 18 that says we go from glory to glory, Christ formed in us. So the more of Christ's likeness in you, formed in you as you yield to the Lord, we're his workmanship, the Holy Spirit works in us to be more like Jesus, <laughs> and then you have more strength. Oh, that's the goal of God. He wants you and I to go through life by his grace, by his strength, by the Holy Spirit. No wonder he said way back in, in the Old Testament, I believe it's Zechariah 4, where it says, not by your power or might, but by the Holy Spirit. Amen. By the Holy Spirit we go through these trials and come out pure gold. So what did Paul do? I was amazed to see in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, 14 to 13 to 16, Paul was stressed. Yes, mighty Paul. He couldn't find his brother in Troas, so he was distressed about that. So what did he do? He burst forth with praise. He burst forth with praise, and he realized it was just another step in the triumphant procession of the glory of God in and through his life. And then he said profound words. Praise God. Thanks be to God who causes me always to triumph through Christ the Lord and manifest the fragrance and knowledge of him through me in every place. That's a revival verse. So let's do what Paul did. Let's burst forth in praise. Arise and shine, for the light of God has come upon you, Christians, and the glory of the Lord be revealed. Oh, precious one, whatever you're going through, the greater one is for you and with you, and if you're a Christian inside you. Ask this question, can God handle it? Mm -hmm. He's with you, he loves you. Be strong, be of good courage. Triumph in your trials by the Holy Spirit and the Word of God, amen. Eternally Yours Television is entirely supported by interested viewers and listeners like you. With a donation of $20 or more, you may request one of these gifts. Please prayerfully consider your role in supporting Eternally Yours Television. few minutes of the telecast, I, I just want to share from my heart a wee bit about Abraham, the father of faith. Scripture says in Romans chapter 4, it says that contrary to hope, Abraham believed in hope, considered not his body, but a hundred years old, his wife, ninety, and he staggered not in unbelief but was strong in faith, believing what God had promised he was able to do. 
And I've been challenged to take that a step further by the Holy Ghost, by the faith that Christ works in us. Not only is he able, but he will do what he promised. I am sure Abraham, when he was told that his wife Sarah would bear a child, even though she was 90, I'm sure he didn't wring his hands and think, oh God, can you do it? No, he believed. And so my encouragement to you as we go for the goal through our trying, trying difficult times, cleave to Christ the Lord and believe his word and cleave to his word that is life and spirit. Jesus said so in John 6, 63. Have people pray for you. Call in for prayer. There's some good 24-hour Christian prayer, prayer lines and during this telecast, there's someone available usually to pray for you. And just remember, Christ is praying for you and the Holy Spirit is praying for our weaknesses. And I'd like to pray for you. Oh, Father in heaven, I bow my heart. Oh, Abba, Father, there are people going through so much that have watched the telecast. Sometimes our families are in trouble. Sometimes we are God. We look to the greater one. Oh, God. You're the greater one than any need we have. You're greater than what's happening in the world. You're greater than what's happening in our families. You're greater than what's troubling our lives, our health, our situations. You're the greater one, the greater one, the greater one. And God, I pray, because miracles testify of Christ in us. Miracles testify of Christ in my life in this ministry. I'm asking you, Abba, to do some miracles for us. Miracles for the viewers. Do some miracles, miracles of strength, miracles of provision, miracles of healing, miracles of deliverances. Do some miracles, Father and glorify your son, Yeshua, Messiah. For I pray and I ask for this, Abba, Father, surprise us with some incredible, great miracles. And I ask it all in the name and the power and the faith and through the blood of Jesus Christ, Yeshua, Messiah, the prayer answering, life-giving, delivering, healing name. Amen and amen, hallelujah. Oh, precious ones, may the Holy Spirit fall upon you fresh. Please support the ministry. I love giving the word of God. Amen.